Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Friday, November the 8th, 2019. And what you're looking at here are some pictures of skillets that I've completely restored. This is a BSNR number five. Picked it up at a, at a recent um, estate sale. And I also went to an antique mall on recent sourcing trips. You're going to see some pictures of before and after here on the skillets that I've done. This one is a Griswold number three small logo and this one is before on the left side and after on the right side and then the next photo here is a Dutch oven it's a Griswold Iron Mountain series and it's a number eight and a five quart piece very nice and finally extremely rare piece it is an Erie number eight pre-Griswold, but it actually is a Griswold skillet. So stay tuned. I'll tell you what it's all about. Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Friday, November the 8th, 2019, and I'm back to give you guys an update of the cast iron pieces that I picked up recently within the last two to three weeks. And this one you're looking at here in September when I was with my mom for her birthday. And uh, we'll go ahead and share with you my dud and my scores. This one is obviously a score. It's a waffle maker uh, from the Griswold Manufacturing Company. It's an antique. I will get back to explaining a little bit about that later in the video. And I also have a couple of questions on this one that I want to ask you guys uh, for future video content. So stay tuned. Please watch. I will know if you didn't because I'm going to ask you to answer this question at the end of the video. All right, we have a few other pieces here. We've got a number four, a number three. We've got a Dutch oven. And we have a number five and a number eight. And two of these pieces are very rare of all of these. One is not as common. as Actually, it's, it's quite rare as well. It's not super rare, but it's less common. And then, of course, I mean, all of these pieces you don't run into every day. So I guess it's as much as somebody's willing to pay for it. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do with some of these pieces. I'm going to sell some. I'm going to keep some. And I may leave one for the metal picker. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, this one here is a number four. At the time I picked it up, I thought it was a Griswold. You can see part of the logo there. Uh, looks like it has chrome plating on it. And it's, you know, it could end up being a good cooker, but it's it's a spinner. It um, It's definitely um, con, convex on top here. It And it actually, somebody had told me, actually two or three people had told me that this is actually a recast. This is when somebody casts, takes an old mold from a legit company and pours iron in it um, of their own to make a copy. It's a copy of a number four Griswold, but it's not the real thing. So I didn't realize that when I picked it up. Never heard anybody talk about that before. It's just something that doesn't come uh, across too much um, in forums or even on YouTube. I wasn't aware of recast. Now I know. If I see anything like that again, I uh, probably will not get it. They don't have any collectible value per se. If that were a real piece and it were in decent shape, number fours are very, very rare. Griswold, and that's one reason why I picked it up, uh, to check more into it. Okay, moving right along. A um, couple, or actually last week or the week before last, I was outsourcing with my Facebook group and on the way home stopped in an antique store, picked up three pieces. This was one of them, eight bucks. This was the other one, eight bucks. This one is a Griswold number three, 709 H. This is one where I thought there was a typo. I thought there were two L's there, but there was crud on top of it. It didn't look like there was that much crud, but when I cleaned it up, as you can see, it's in fantastic shape. Very little pitting. This is the cooking surface. You can see utensils there, maybe a pit mark there. Um, that's it. This piece is in very good shape, and it doesn't spin. And it sits flat on the countertop, and it's completely restored with three coats of seasoning. It is a small logo number three. 
Not quite as collectible as a large logo, but believe it or not, I see more large logos online than the small. So the small may be a little bit more rare than the large on the number three. I see more of the larger sizes, you know, with the small logo than the large or the small size with the small um, block logo there on the Griswold. But I am very happy with it. And uh, it's just a gorgeous piece. They sell anywhere from about 30 plus shipping to 49 or $50 plus shipping, depending on the condition and uh, all that. So I think this would be at the higher end of, the, of, the, uh, of that range. So at any rate, there is the Griswold there. And then um, at the same time, I picked this one up. I picked up this Dutch oven, if you remember correctly. It didn't have a bail handle, which is a drawback, and it had a lot of rust on it. So we're going to take a look, and we're going to go ahead and lift lift this up. This is a two-piecer. It's a 1037. It's a Griswold Iron Mountain Series. And I'm going to go ahead and put the put the uh, move this piece over. Ah, uh, this Griswold. Let me move it over there. Okay, and so I can actually put this get this lid out, and we can actually look at it. There it is. There's a little bit of um, a discoloration there, but it cleaned up really, really nice. I got all the rust off. This was a bear to re, uh, re-season. You had to use a, a Q-tip to go around the edges there to get all the nooks and crannies and also around the lid markings there. And there is just one area on the, oops, on the surface that was a gouge, or I don't know if that's part of the manufacturing process, but I was able to get off all the droppings on it, the paint or whatever the heck it was. And just, just a little bit of pitting in the handle. But otherwise, it's in very, very good condition. And then, of course, we have the, the Dutch oven part itself. And a little bit of lint in there. There's a little bit of pitting. Um, it would be right, right there, just a little bit. But it cleaned up really nice, too. That's three coats of seasoning. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Yep, I can. It's kind of heavy, but that's okay. This is the back. It's a number eight. It's a five-quart, apparently. And it's piece number 1036. And we know it's an Iron Mountain series because it has the four-digit pin number with a slant on the font. So there's 1037 and 1036, and they go together. So it's a wonderful piece. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and put that back together again. So we are back, and there is that gorgeous, gorgeous Dutch oven. It's beautiful. And it is a Griswold. Griswold made the Iron Mountain series in the 1940s. So, very nice pickup. I paid 15 for that at the antique shop. He tried to get 25. I said no bail handle and all the rust. Don't think so, but if you, you know, want to off, offer less, I'll think about it and he said 15 and I took it. So, there we go. So now the next piece was at an estate sale a week before that, and this piece I paid 15 for. Um, and I paid actually less for the piece underneath it, which is extremely rare. But let's take a look at this one first. This is a BSNR, a Red Mountain series. <laughs> a lot of people get these confused with the Iron Mountain Griswold. But this is Birmingham Stove and Range. And most of the pieces are not marked with Birmingham Stove and Range, but you can easily tell them by the inset continuous heat ring, this one was made back in the 30s and 40s because it has a crude model. It's That is a little offset between 530 and 6, and it's a number 5. And you can see the um, handle goes all the way into the sidewall there. And then you have the teardrop here, and you have the um, how it's actually um, 3D, I guess, in there. And then you have the small pour spouts. But you can see there how beautiful it is. And I didn't take a wire wheel to any of these. And because I feel they're all collectible. And I don't think that's prudent to take a wire wheel to anything that's truly collectible. Look how nice that cleaned up. But I paid 15 for that. These are going for anywhere from 30 to about 45 uh, plus shipping, uh, depending on the condition. But there's not very many of them. 
not very many at all. So if there's less of them, you can sometimes get more money for them um, because they're not as common. You don't see them all the time. You see, uh, BSNR I've always done well with when I've had them. And the last one I got had a crack in it. One of my loyal uh, subscribers was able to get that from me. We just She just took it off my hands and I shipped it out to her. It was a number seven. I was really disappointed that it had a crack, but it wasn't bad. All right. Now, finally, for the rare piece, this is the Erie. It's a star maker, and it's a star maker maker's mark. It's got the parentheses here and here. This is a second series Griswold with the heat ring on the outside of the skillet. It's number eight, and that looks like to be a number eight. F. I'm not sure, but it looks like an F. But from all my research, this is a second series. It's called a pre-Griswold Erie. It is a Griswold, but that's before they use the Griswold name on the skillets. It's got the sidewall here that is um, that they, they made, and it comes out, and there's a teardrop handle. These are extremely rare and extremely valuable. Not as rare as a spider skillet, which is a number eight spider. You'll see a spider logo here. I think that was made a little bit later in the early 1900s. They didn't make very many of those either. That's why they're extremely rare. But this one here sits flat and you turn it over and it's really nice here. The only thing, it's a little... Get a little extra black seasoning. You can't really see it now that it refused to budge. I soak this a lot between lye and I'd scrub it down and put it back in vinegar. I'd scrub it down and go back into lye to soften the uh, seasoning some more. Then back into vinegar to remove what had softened that what was softened in the lye bath. And I just went back and forth and back and forth and it paid off. Now electrolysis would do the same thing in less time. But I'm, that's okay, because I just let it soak for a while, and I go do other things. doesn't bother me at all. Um, but here, this skillet turned out really great. Um, when I was seasoning it, it was stripped so well that the oil just soaked right in. I use Crisco, as you can see over there. Um, it soaked right in almost right away, so I didn't know how much of the skillet had actually been coated with seasoning. So... I just made sure to, to really grease it up really good. Then I removed everything uh, before I put it in for the seasoning cycles. And there's I can link the video on that uh, if you want to see that. And then here is the back side. There was a big, ugly sp spot right there. And I actually thought there was a crack at first, but it's actually the manufacturing process. What they would do is they would fill their cauldron with enough molten iron to make several skillets at one time. And they had to hurry and pour it into the molds. And if they didn't go fast enough, sometimes the, the seasoning would start to s form or solidify on one side when it was still liquid on the other side. Something like that. I just know it's something the way these were casted. And anyhow, uh, but this one is extremely rare. And this one probably is worth around $250 plus shipping. One of these uh, did sell that was like this one here. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it it was the best score followed by my cast iron waffle maker. But this one is for us. It's a number nine. It's perfect for my stove. If I lift up the paddles, you can see the burner underneath. It's perfect. And I'll go ahead and lift it up by the bell ring. You can see... It just sits over there really, really nicely. And this is, I did this three times. There is a little bit of pitting, not much, but it cleaned up really, really nice. And we're going to open it up here, and you can see how nice the seasoning took to that. And now that was very tedious to do it. If you want to do it correctly, where you, where you, you strip it down very patiently, get everything off of it, and then you season it, and then you make sure everything is wiped on and wiped off again. And I actually used um, these uh, lint-free rags to go in between the rows there. Those are called square nubs. That's what they refer to them as. So this is going to make super waffles. This is, I think, cast iron as well. Some of these are stainless steel. But 
you know, my thought was I could show you guys how I season this. Now, this is three coats of seasoning on here right now. I could add a fourth coat if you want to see it. It's tedious, and it will be a lot of editing, but if you guys are not interested in that, I'm not going to spend the time to make the video to do it, to season it a fourth time, just because it's a lot of work in editing a video like that, because I, I need to use my GoPro camera, and I need to, you know, put a bunch of clips and edit a bunch of clips and so forth. But I'll do it if you guys are really interested, so let me know. Um, otherwise, I can just make you, you know, show you guys making waffles with this. Um, and it should make great waffles, and, and how I heat them up is the same way I made waffles with my favorite Pequaware waffle maker, which I'm selling, and that one is done. But anyway, let me know in the comments section, but this one here is quite rare. Number nines are the largest size. They made sizes six through nine. The pattern numbers many times do not match. This is a 316. And then, of course, you have a 317. Then we're going to take those out. It's kind of heavy. Uh, let me put them down. Let me see. Put them over here. Just don't want to oops, damage anything else. And then we're going to turn this over so you can see what this looks like on the other side. And it says here a number 9, and it's 316. Or 318, sorry. 318. You can see it there. So 318 on the base. This is called a low base. And it says the Griswold Manufacturing Company, Erie, PA, USA. So yeah, this is the base part. It's considered a low base. And you needed a low base so you could work on low stoves. And you want to go ahead and put those in. And they just have a joint that connects really easily. Just lift it up. Very simple to use. Extremely simple. And because of the seasoning layers there, that's a very smooth joint there. But very tedious to season, and that's why they're expensive. And I'm not sure what this would run, but in the 200s, I'm sure. I wouldn't let it go. If I were going to sell it, I wouldn't let it go for less than that because it takes a lot of time and energy to season this. And that's what you're paying for when you buy this stuff when it's seasoned by other uh, other sellers. So anyway, the video has been going on long enough. Let me know what you want to see in a future video content for this one. This one, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but that's my dud of the day. These others will probably, probably be sold. This one is a very rare find, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that because you just don't find these every day in this condition. Very light. And that's how you can tell it's a legitimate one. It's extremely light. I can handle it super easy. So anyway, guys, this has been going on long enough. I appreciate you guys watching. Please give me a thumb up. Leave a comment or question below. And please tell me what you want to see on this one. Okay, guys, thanks and go make it a great day.